the the big data will reach its its limits. Um, there's a there's a conflict here. Um, places like uh, AWS collect all the data to a central point. Why are they doing that? Because then they um, can use the big data, which happens in the cloud. So the collection of big data, they can train their models. So the minute you start doing that, you need massive server parks. And we already discussed that last time. But while that's reaching its limits, we already know, uh, Orlando already said that uh, YouTube videos are are shared at the at an intensity of 1K, and, and the technology is already at 4K. At 4K. Yes. So, so just simply because there's not enough space in those server parks, uh, the, the centralized model is reaching its limits. So, so you get um, you get local access points, and uh, one example is this swim.ai, which does uh, introduce edge computing. Edge computing means in the cloud. With local access, and so it's almost like a local cloud for local usage. So imagine you stream the eight hours of driving your Tesla, uh, which we last time already uh, identified. Well, why would you pull that to the center? Well, because someone wants to know what the behavior of all Tesla drivers is, and and model the software of the Tesla to be safer. In the future, yeah, that's the reason to pull it central. But do you really need to pull that data to the center uh, to facilitate the driver? No, you don't. Uh, you can use ad edge computing, um, and edge computing can uh, pick up the signals. If you combine it with 5G, then sort of it's fairly easy. Your your car communicates with 5G the whole time, but the edge computing doesn't push all that data to the center where less and less um, uh, broadband is available to to, uh, to run all that data through and to train the, the, the engine, et cetera, et cetera, and still send a signal back to the user. So if you start running 5G into a, the city or into a, just a Tesla driver interface with the cloud, then this edge computing could be the next thing. But again, the, the argument of the Amazons and all the big giants is, well, then we don't train our models. So this kind of interesting to see how that works, uh, edge uh, computing in the cloud, uh, and thereby the uh, uh, data doesn't get sort of pushed to one central slot from which it needs to be sucked up again if you want to use it in Los Angeles. So it's it's all about proximity of uh, server capacity. Uh, now a lot of the centralized servers uh, go to places where the electricity costs are low and the uh, the, the construction costs are low. Yeah. And and there's quite a lot of them in Holland. Why? Because Holland has I think of the four glass fiber infrastructures, uh, three of them run through Holland. So you want to be on that glass fiber crossroad. The next slide. Um, we we have uh, uh, cables again limitations on servers and data parks. What we just say, and once you get to the IoT, you, you're like uh, interconnecting roots underground from a tree. So so it gets into a, this refined uh, system of uh, the roots of a tree um, uh, talking to to whatever surroundings uh, you, you are. So you get into the 5G generation where obviously a whole new cloud computing needs to be in, invented and introduced to be sustainable. Which could mean uh, if uh, governments are smart, they, they pick up this 5G, uh, they built a cloud computing uh, by governments uh, for local communities, mm -hmm. uh, use edge, edge computing. Uh, and um, uh, thereby become less dependent of the tech giants. That's the sort of the rescue uh, concept which the, the literature is, is referring to, but I haven't seen a lot of um, real movement in that direction, but I'm expecting that to be, become a big thing uh, if, uh, if and around to the introduction of 5G.